section 2.5 so here we are with variables and so let's just jump right in here uh we've got uh variables and you can see here sometimes you'll, you'll see variable name uh but we refer to them as variables so the name that represents a value stored in the computer's memory all right so we use them to access and manipulate data and you'll see down here just an example uh we've got this statement here so we've got age equals 49 all right, so we're saying this is our variable name, age, and we're using the assignment operator, which is right here, and it's the equal sign here. So we're assigning the value of 49. Okay, so we're saying age equals 49. We're assigning the value of 49 to our variable name, age. So wherever we refer to this uh, age variable name in our program after this statement, uh, the computer will see the number 49. Okay, so um, you can see the way it's written here. So variable equals expression. So you have to put the name here and then whatever type of thing you're storing in over here. So um, so that's that's basically it for that. Uh, let's take a look at a few more things. Um, when you're assigning them, the variable receiving the value must be on the left-hand side. So we have to say x equals 7. We cannot say 7 equals x. This will give you an error. Okay, so it will be confused by that. You'll always put the variable name first. Okay, so a variable can be passed as an argument to a function. So that's totally fine, uh, but we're not going to include them in, uh, in quote marks. Okay, so and we'll deal more with this uh, later on too. So you'll see a little bit more about this statement uh, when we're dealing with functions we write to. Uh, right now we'll use them like in print and all that kind of good stuff. But uh, anyway, for now, we are saying that you don't want to include them in quote marks. Now, the reason why you don't want to do that is because it turns them into a string. So for example, if I give you this right here, so if we say x equals 7, totally fine, right? But we do not want to say x equals quote seven quote. Okay, this is a string. Okay, so if we are saying this is a string, what will happen is that's totally fine with the computer. Okay, we can create any kind of strings that we'd like. The computer doesn't care. The interpreter doesn't care at all. Uh, and so it will see this and it will say, um, great. So there it is. The problem is if later on you use x in any kind of math problem, where you say, I want to add X plus Y to get Z, uh, the computer will give you an error because it will say, wait a second, this is a string. This is not a number. Okay, so you definitely want to make sure when you're when you're using a number, do not use the quotes. Okay, so that, that's a big deal. Also, you cannot use a variable if um, a, a value is not assigned to it. Okay, so you can only use it if a value is assigned to it. Uh, meaning I can't just put X in the code, hit enter, and, and be done with it, right? It'll give you, when you're going through the code, in fact, let me just pull one up. If I just said, like, I could say, like, Y equals, oops. Um, like y equals five, right? And I go down the next line. I'm like, oh, later on, I want to use z, okay? But I'm just gonna leave it there, right? So what ends up happening is, if I come down here and I go to visualize, sees the first one, so I'm gonna say, boom, y equals five, totally great, right? Gets to this, and it gives me a, oh, not defined, okay? So you'll get this error in there. So you can't just like placehold it uh, in that situation. If you wanted to do something like that, you could you remember use the comment option so i could do this and i could say z and i might even make a note um saving this for da, da, whatever later on right okay and that's a comment line that's totally fine but you can't just like say hey, i'm gonna i'm gonna reserve this particular one and just leave it there has to be defined okay uh let's take a look at a few naming rules okay so it cannot be a Python keyword, or you know, sometimes referred to as reserved word, right? So we've seen print that as a that as a reserved word. We cannot use that to define a variable. I can't say print equals 49. It doesn't work that way. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get an error, uh, and that is an issue. Okay, so be very careful of that. Uh, it cannot contain spaces. So if you're gonna use something like a space, I'll show you an example here in a sec in the next couple slides. If you want a space in between that style, then what you would do instead is simply use uh, an underscore, okay? So I might do something like this. I'm just gonna type right here. So if I said like X, uh, actually I'll come down here so it's a little bit easier to see. So if I'm typing in here and this is my line and I'm defining it and I wanted to include a space. And so something I used before was I said um, age 
um, Jeff, and let's say I wanted to use that. Oh, stupid Microsoft courses, capitalizing that. Uh, but if I wanted a space here and I wanted to continue like this, right? So you can't do that. That would give you an error. If I was said like this equals 49, that will give me an error. Can't do it. Instead, what you would do is put an underscore. Okay. So you can do that underscore totally fine. You just can't have a space. Okay. Uh, something else. Um, let's see. Uh, first character must be a letter or an underscore. You can't start with a number. Okay, you could put an underscore and then a word. It's just kind of weird. Typically, though, you'll start with uh, start with just a letter and then go from there. Um, after the first character, you can use letters, digits, or underscores. So, and, and we've seen a few of those along the way. Uh, variable names are case sensitive, so that's very important. And we'll see that on the next uh, slide too. I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you that. So, case sensitive. Really, really important to, to, uh, to pay attention to that. Uh, and then, of course, the variable name should reflect its usage. So we try and use descriptive variable names. That's the key. So we will, I mean, in some of our little playing around programs, we might use, you know, an X equals or whatever. But uh, when you're writing your code, you want it to be very, very descriptive. And so let me show you some of those uh, kinds of variable names. So on this next slide here, uh, pull over here. Um, so when we talk about reflecting its, its purpose or usage, here we go. So descriptive variable names, typically multiple words. Uh, there are two different conventions that you typically see. Uh, this is the first one. Capitalize the first letter of each new word except the first one. Okay, so this is something typically called camel case. So we are starting with lowercase always, but then when we get to a new word, we capitalize the first letter and we keep going. No spaces, no underscores, right? Uh, so that's that one. The other uh, method you see used a lot is underscore. So we use this little underscore. And um, so for this one, you see all lowercase, no capital letters. Uh, so quantity, underscore on, underscore under. Okay, so our total sales, here we go, underscore uh, like that. So these are two different variable names here. So total sales here, not the same as here. Now I put a little note here, uh, please use the underscore method of assigning variable names. I really don't care too much as long as you're consistent. So if you're used to using camel case, if you've done this before, um, then go ahead and do it this way. You will notice that our author, Tony Gaddis, in this particular book, because he writes for multiple languages, but in this particular book, he uses the underscore method. So his variable names for the most part will look like this. So if you want to use that, that's totally fine with me. That's why I put this little note here. But if you're like, oh, I really want to use camel case, that's totally fine too. So I really don't care as long as you're consistent, okay? So don't use both of these in one program, right? Don't write camel case for one and then underscore for another. No, if you're going to start using camel case, use it through the whole program. If you're going to use underscore, use it through the whole program, okay? Um, so that's all what this is saying right here, right? Okay, so now, Remember, and this is something that'll get you, um, trust me on this one, because you'll be typing away and you'll mean to put this, right? So you'll mean to put total sales with capital S on there. You accidentally type it with the lowercase letter. Then later on when you try and refer to this, the computer says, hey, I don't know where to find this. Like, I don't see it. It doesn't exist. It's undefined. Uh, so anyway, so you have to be careful of that. Same thing is here, right? So total underscore sales. Okay. So that, that's, you know, very important to watch out for that kind of stuff. Um, also with um, reserve words. So again, I said, don't use reserve words for things. So if I come down here, it's going to bother me with this thing in the middle of it. Uh, but if I come down here and I said, we know that print is a reserve word. So if I was in, uh, in fact, let me just go over that real quick. Hang on. Let's do this real quick. Uh, let's go to Python Tutor. Okay, so if I say, and I'm in here, and I'm, and I'm coding away, and I say print, and I want to print something, right? So I, I, I typed that out. But if I wanted to use print as a uh, variable name, because that's a reserve word, no, no, no. That's going to give us all sorts of problems, okay? If I did this, if I capitalize it, print equals that, I would be totally fine with it, okay? So um, this would work, right? Don't do that. Uh, do not ever use a keyword like this or a reserved word in any kind of variable. It's just not a good idea. So use this descriptive variable name for what you're going to do. Uh, do not use any kind of reserved words. And you'll learn more of the reserved words as you go along. Uh, for now, as long as you stick with descriptive variable names, you won't have any issues because you'll be coming up with all sorts of good stuff. Okay, so let's take a look at a few examples. Uh, we've got this one. Um, so total sales, we said yes. That looks good. Total sales like this, yes, that looks good. Okay, total sales like this, uh-uh, can't use a period, all right? This one, fourth quarter sales. It looks like it'd be legit, right? No, no, no. 
you cannot begin with a digit, so I can't start with fourth. So instead, a better descriptive variable name for this uh, would be something like sales fourth quarter, okay? So something like that. And um, then you get, you know, it's under sales and you're good to go and all that kind of good stuff. So it would start with the S. So don't start with a four. Down here, I wish we could use this. You cannot use a dollar sign, okay? So can't do that. All right, so hopefully you're getting the hang of it. Once you start typing these out, it'll uh, it'll make more sense to you. Okay, so a few more things, and then we're going to do a little program here at the end of this. Okay, so let's uh, let's roll right here. Okay, so um, if you want to display multiple items with print, you can do that. Uh, this, uh, this is something we probably won't do right now, but you might do it later on. Uh, we're going to separate things with commas. And when we get to this, I'll show you. So for now, we'll just say, hey, let's kind of pause on this one right here right, real quick. And uh, when we get to this, I'll show you, and it would make more sense than just trying to go through it here. Uh, variable reassignment, so you can assign different variables along the way. Um, they can be any type that you'd like to do. Whether maybe it's an integer, maybe it's a float. Uh, maybe it's a string, all that kind of good stuff. Um, we won't worry about the garbage collector. This is done automatically by the Python interpreter, so we don't have to worry about that at all. Okay, so not a big deal. Um, so I'm kind of cruising through this because you, you will get to more of this along the way. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about different types. Okay, so the, the data types that we have, um, and you'll see uh, int for integer. We'll see float for our uh, real numbers that we're going to use. Um, so in... in our case, and just thinking about this, normally strings we've seen for storing, uh, you know, like sentences, those kinds of things. For us, an integer, we're talking about just, you know, here we go down here with our little whole number. We've got this little float. So kind of think about it in terms of decimal places. So this is an integer. This would be a float. Okay, that's that's the way um, that's the way you'll see it. So if you need decimal places, so anytime you're using currency, you're going to want to use a float. Okay, you want decimal places for that because you want the you want the cents in there. Okay. Um, and that, that's just all this is saying here, too. So if you don't have decimal place, consider int. Otherwise, consider float. Now, Python is awesome for this because it makes it very easy for us. If we were in another language like, uh, like C++, for example, we would have to define this. So we'd have to come in here. And even though now Python is saying num1 equals 7, like they understand you want this to store as an integer, as a 7. But in another language, we would have to instead put that in there. And we'd have to say int in order to store it that way, or we might say float or double, uh, which is type of float. So we, um, we'd we have that in there. But for us in Python, really easy. If you want to store it as an int, just don't put any decimal places. If you want to store it with decimal places, just put dot zero, and you'll be good to go when you're storing them originally, okay? And there are different ways of doing this, but for now, this is, this is good to go for us, okay? So if we take a look at this, um, there are a couple different ways of storing things, okay? So if we say, um, and, and as it's referring to these here, you can see in here, if we said like x equals 99, that's referring to an integer, which is 99, right? If we said x equals take me to your leader, and we'd have to put that in quotes, I uh, should probably include that in there, but this would be in quotes because it'd be a string, then that's referencing a string. So it doesn't matter. We can use the same variable name. It just depends on what you put on the other side of the assignment operator, on the other side of the equal sign, okay? So you have to watch out for that. So let's get a little practice with this. All right, because uh, I've been yammering away here for a little bit, showing you some different things. So let's take a look at this. Programming challenge number one. So this says, write a program that stores the integers 50 and 100 in variables and stores the sum of these two in a variable named total. Display the total on the screen. Okay, so you're going to have a variable for 50. You're going to have a variable for 100. Then you're going to have a variable that adds the variable name for your for 50, the variable name that you use for 100, and it will store those in total. And then it gives you a print statement to display total. So pause the video, take a few minutes, and see if you can do this on your own before you come back, and I'll show you a sample solution. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to work on this, and let's go take a look at a little sample solution here. It's on the next slide, so here we go. All right, so on this particular slide, you see at the top, again, when you're doing this, make sure you are commenting out, putting these things in. So this is just a practice one, but, uh, but try and get in the habit of doing this. I want to see this on all, your, uh, on all your programs, okay? So here is just a sample idea of how this might work. Um, I put first num, and notice I use camel case, so 
you know, if you want to change that and or you use the underscore method, totally fine. You'll see I try and do a mix where I'll use both just because, you know, some people like one way, some people like it the other. So I try and mix it up a little bit. Um, that and I learned using camel case. So it's just second nature to me to do it this way. So anyway, uh, we have uh, first num equals 50. The white space doesn't matter at all, by the way. So we don't care about that at all. If you write this out and you wrote it like this, totally fine. Like doesn't matter at all. The computer just gets rid of the white space when um, when it's compiling anyway. So when it goes through, so it's not really that big a deal. Okay, it's really just for you. So I like spaces in here just because I think it makes it more legible for uh, me to see and when I'm trying to go through the program. So I include spaces uh, for things like that anyway. Okay, so then I'm coming down here. Here's my third variable name total okay so i'm using the third variable name here total and i'm going to go ahead now and if i um, look at this i'm going to say total equals you're going to take first num plus second num and now that will store that in here so the computer is going to see 50 plus 100 and it's going to store it in total then here we have our print statement now this is something that we you may not have seen yet, uh, but in this particular print statement, I started with a string. Notice the string here. So the total is in quotes, put a comma, and then I put the variable name. Now for you, you probably just have print and then the parentheses open. You put total in here uh, and that's the end of it. Okay. But for this, I wanted to be, you know, a little bit of sentence here and describe it. And, and so there you go. So let me go ahead and put this in, um, in, in Python Tutor and let's take a look at it. All right, so let's take a look at this in Python Tutor. So here we go with first num, second num, total, all this kind of good stuff. So I'm going to hit visualize execution. And you'll see as this goes along here, you'll see what the computer is doing. So it's going to start right here. And it's going to say, hey, I have this variable named first num. We are storing 50 in there. The next one, look at this. Second num, it's storing 100. Then we're going to take total. And when I click next, it's going to create total. And it added those two up, okay, and stored that as, uh, you know, our, our, under our variable name here, total, okay? So you, as a user, have not seen anything happen. So this is a computer screen. We've seen nothing, okay? This is our first thing. This is our only output right here. And when I click next, the total is 150, okay? So that's the way that works. Now, again, I threw this at you a little bit. Probably the way you had this written out, it was just, uh, it was just this. So, and that's totally fine. So it would just print and it would just have the number 150. One thing to be careful of, again, when we're using numbers, uh, don't put this in quotes. Because what will happen here, maybe some of you found this out. So I'm storing these, look at this. Everything is working behind the scenes, okay? I'm going to click next here. Total prints the word total. Like, I don't want that. I want 150. So this is going to be a logic error for us be, for the code. The computer doesn't see the syntax error. It doesn't care. It's just printing what you told it to print. Uh, but this isn't what we wanted, so we made an error, okay? So um, you have to kind of watch out for that. So let me go back here again real quick and show you what I did. So I put this in quotes, and I said the total is after the quote where I closed the string out. I put a comma, put a space just so it would be easier to see. Then I put the name of the variable that I want to print, and then close the parenthesis. Okay, so... Rolling through here again, we get one statement. Total is 150. All right. So hopefully that that makes sense to you, uh, and, and or at least walking through it makes sense to you. If you had any issues with it, hopefully you got you know at least part of the way along the way. Uh, the print statement is a little tricky because doing this, I kind of threw this at you, but um, but anyway, you'll like using that. It helps the user see exactly what's going on. So uh, to to use a little bit of a better description there. Okay. So this was kind of a long section, but uh, there's a lot for us to cover.